And our next speaker is Her Excellency Dr. Maryam Matar, founder and chairperson of the UAE Genetic Diseases Association, founder and chairperson of the UAE Down Syndrome Association, and deputy chairperson of, the, of Dubai Cares. Dr. Maryam Matar was also the first Emirati woman to bear the title of Undersecretary to the Ministry of Health in 2006. In 2008, she was the first Emirati woman to be entrusted as Director General of the Community Development Authority, the CDA of Dubai. Welcoming on stage Her Excellency Dr. Maryam Matar. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'm so glad to be here today with all of you and accept my sincere apologies for being late. I would like uh, to start with a very brief about the whole concept of, to of today's meeting. When I was approached by the organizer to give a talk about national treasure, uh, I, I, I had a second thought before even accepting it because I believe we have plenty of national treasure. When we talk about national treasure, I believe Miss Sarah would be there on the top of the list. And I can be in the end of the list or giving a talk. And I thought there should be other people on the list who might not be able to communicate with you and come in, uh, on the stage. Because of that, allow me to mention a list of a national treasure, which I believe they should be mentioned anywhere whenever a woman will stand on a podium to talk about the achievement of Emirati women. And as all of you knows that, First of all, we should start with our mother, Sheikha Fatma, Allah yihfabha. She's the real treasure which helped us and nourish the rest of us to maintain this lovely chain of gym, which really shining around, especially in the sky of United Arab Emirates. And after her, I would like to uh, mention my mother, my grandmother, her name Fatma. She was one of the traditional healers in Dubai, and she is one of the main reason why today I am a physician specialized in genetic disease and trying to give back to my community through the gene mapping of the new population where we'll make sure by 2032 the new generation of UAE population will be much better quality with their gene to maintain a very healthy development and sustainable development of our lovely nation. <coughs> Yadu Fatma, I was grateful when she passed away. And I was wondering, among those people who came to express their condolences to my, pair, to my mother, they were, many of them, they were stranger, but they were crying at, more than us, more than what we're supposed to cry and show our sadness to lose our grandmother. I asked my mother, Mama, who are they? Why they are so much in deep? cry and, and, and really they are so sad. She told me, Mama, they are her patient. They were those patients who usually she take care of or she will help to give birth and different aspect. She had a great impact on their different aspect of their life. And then I told my mother, Mama, if I will grow up and I will be a physician, if I will die, people will cry after me the same way they are crying after my grandmother. She said, Mama, don't say that, but you have to be a good doctor and to take care of your people. So from that day, because of my Yiddo Fatima, my grandmother Fatima, I decided to be a physician. And maybe Fahima will remember she was my classmate as well. In that time, when I was in a grade four and five, 
those students who study well and always get high mark, they used to call them Egyptian, Masriya, you know, that she's Egyptian because they were the top in the school. ممكن كانوا يذكروا لنا مصريات مب الشاطر في المدرسه هذا مصري ولا هاي مصريه. So I do remember I grown up with uh, my daughter, my sister Layla. She is one class ahead of me. So when I used to give a poet or talk in the morning uh, gathering, they were telling her, uh, asking her, Layla, is she your sister Miriam? She said, no, her mother is Egyptian. My mother is Emirati. So it was not something where they will be proud of at that time. So from there, I believe if you would like one day to be called a national treasure, you need to have a clear plan. You need to start it long time ahead to make sure that you have a clear ma map and clear way. And the main thing is to be focused. And I believe through all the journey where I was really blessed enough by our leader to, 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 to be given such opportunity to be a pioneer in more than one uh, government position as Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, especially when we talk about health in Ministry of Health, then in Dubai government. And all those opportunities doesn't come in a day. You need to work hard to make sure that you deserve that. And, and to reach that point, it's really take hard work. And when I say hard work, it shouldn't be painful or chaotic. No, sometime you will enjoy the journey if you love what you are doing and if you are really focused and planned well about that. And what helped me really throughout the journey is to always imagine myself as a drop of water. I always, what helped me to go and proceed through all the path with all the barrier, simply by imagining myself as a drop of water. And we know the drop of water has lots of characteristic. Apart from being very essential for life, it has its own uh, characteristic when it comes to transparency. As a leader or as a team, a, a member within the team who is leading any project, I always, when I go back and think about how should I maintain the characteristic of the drop of water, when it comes to a decision making, when it comes to a discussion, I go back and I try to select that characteristic of a drop of water in that situation which I need. So the transparency of the drop of water help you a lot to make sure you are transparent enough among your team in regard to your vision and in regard to your decision. And that itself will help everyone to see through you and that will help them to maintain a clearer crystal-like path where they will, they will not follow, but they will make sure they will maintain the path and they will stay with you throughout the way. The other point which I would like also to, uh, to share with you when it's come to drop of water, uh, life is, is not difficult. It might be easy, but it's not difficult. But if you imagine yourself like a drop of water, you can imagine that the drop of water, even in the middle of a mountain, it will find its way to go down. And a lot, many times, they will draw their own path. And I cannot say that I was lucky, but again, uh, I had a great uh, support from everyone in my community that all the positions and all the responsibility which was given to me by my lovely leaders, I was the first one in that position. So I will not go and be repla uh, uh, replacing someone else. No, I'll try to create my own way. And that itself helped me to think out. That was uh, initiated by thinking out of, uh, outside the box. It goes back when I graduated from the college back in 2000. And alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, I was the first on my batch in the medical college when I graduated at that time. And I, I decided from day one when I went to the medical college to be a good uh, physician like my grandmother. But at that era, everybody was thinking about beauty and how good they have to look. And as a woman, I love myself so much. The, uh, my, my nightmare is the wrinkle around my eyes. That day when I see it, really, I start, you too? <laughs> So I decided to be a plastic surgeon, and that was my mission. And even I, 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 I did my search. As soon as I will graduate, I will go and get uh, the further study in that era. So I did my internship in Dubai, and ma namely I did it in uh, 
uh, in Al Safa Clinic. And when I did my rotation, it was 12 weeks. I saw majority of my own people, Emirati, they used to come with an illness or a disease which can be easily treated if they are aware about the prevention tool. And that itself was an eye-opener for me. Then I said, Miriam, let's, let's see how can I change my major and try to help my community in a better way. So I searched and they told me community medicine, it is the best field in medicine where you can serve your community closely and make sure you do a proper health awareness for them. So I changed my major and I told them I'll go for subspecialty as a community medicine. In the same time, I had a rotation two weeks in Al Wasl Hospital and namely in Thalassemia Center. When I went there, almost every day, I used to see a couple coming in and the way they were looking to each other when their child was prepared for blood transfusion, it was really painful. You can see the blame in each one of them, the, the, the feeling that they blame themselves that they are the reason of the suffering of their child. And in 2000, at that time, there were no legislation for premarital investigation. It was only for those Emirati who would like to go for marriage fund support, where the government support Emirati with 70,000 dirham. So uh, I do remember I went to the most senior physician and doctor in Al Wasl Hospital. And uh, before going there, I prepared a two page of my search. And at that time, Cyprus were celebrating 11 year with no single child born with thalassemia in their island. So I went back and I saw they, that they, they didn't do anything magic. Simply they enforce a law and people who are willing to get married and they are a carrier of a disease, government will not give them health insurance. They will not pay to them from the, uh, uh, from the tax money and the church will not officially approve their marriage. So I sat down and I, I tried to copy some of their initiative and I wrote this two page and I went to my senior. I told him, this is what I'm planning to do. Let's do a campaign to <coughs> advocate for this law to enforce in our country. I do remember his talk. He told me, Mama Miriam, you are just graduate. Go and focus your study. Leave this for a decision maker and leave this for the Ministry of Health. This is not your work right now. I was convinced because he's senior enough and I always get his guidance when it comes to advice or treatment of my patient. So my mother, she told me, Mama, why you don't look good like every day coming, uh, coming with lots of stories and how you help your patient? I told her what happened with this communication between me and my senior. Imagine my mother, she went away for a, almost less than half an hour, less than an hour. She came back, she said, Mama, by the way, do you know that we every Friday in the Dhaha between 9 to 11, all the women, I'm living in an area in Dubai, it's called Zabil, and we are a very close neighbors. So every Friday from 9 to 11, the ladies, they gather for gossiping, you know, they prepare the best coffee and the best sweet, and they start gossip around the, the rest of the neighbors. So my mother, she said, Miriam, what about this Friday? I will call the ladies and you try to explain to them what you are saying, that you will do awareness, people should uh, screen, even if they, they don't want a marriage fund. I told her, okay, mama, let's do it this week. So that week she called them in our house and I start talking to the ladies and she said, by the way, uh, um Adil is the son, he is getting married with our other neighbor, uh, Bint Nasser's uh, daughter. I said, okay, mama. She said, I'll make sure they will come also along with the mothers. Uh, the, the, the girl will come with the uh, ladies. I started from there. Imagine from one, one initiative from my lovely mother, Habibti. I started to be invited in all Fridays. I only talk about the, 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 the genetic disease the importance of the screening and the importance of the awareness of the family history and if there is any specific disease was noticeable in those families. And from the, the, the neighborhood gathering, I start to be invited in some senior, uh, in some big uh, governmental organization through one of our neighbor senior uh, women in a senior position. And imagine from 2000, then I started to go to Dubai Women College. So I started to initiate lots of community approach and I go and knock the door. 
And I took the family medicine, community medicine specialty. And in that time, where I need to do all my rotation in, in Al Safa clinic, so I had Ahmed Chelban, Ahmed bin Chelban, he was my senior. I told him, Dr. Ahmed, please, can you allow me that I'll do all the year afternoon clinic? He said, Miriam, everybody avoid afternoon clinic. I said, I need afternoon clinic because in the morning, I need to go around in the community and try to do some awareness. It was all a pers personal initiative. Nobody asked me to do that, and I had no sponsor. Many things doesn't need a sponsor, doesn't need money. Sometimes you need to use the tool available in the community. And from there, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, by 2006, in uh, March, I was honored to be as a guest in the cabinet when His Highness Sheikh Mohammed Allah Yihfada signed the law for pre-marital investigation. And I was honored enough to be called in the ministry to start the first draft, legal draft, with Dr. Hamdi, who's a legal advisor in Ministry of Health. So it is a small initiative. Sometimes you don't need to wait for somebody to ask you. And if you would like to consider yourself one time a leader, a leader, you shouldn't be in the front always. Sometimes you might be in the end of the row, but you can initiate something really good will impact the rest of even those people who are in the top of the pyramid. And proudly saying, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, as you know, in United Arab Emirates, we as a woman, we cannot say that we are better than other women in the region, but we are lucky with our leadership, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. So I started to be supported by my government in more than one initiative. And that was really challenging. And when we go back to other challenge, when I think about drop of water, and you can imagine through my journey in my community, I need to be very flexible, try to move around, try to get afternoon clinic. And, and by the way, by choosing only afternoon clinic, uh, my dear Sarah, imagine I was the most loved uh, colleague among all my colleagues because everybody want to uh, want to escape afternoon clinic so everybody was my friend and my birthday suddenly I'll start to have more gifts ever I had you know because everybody want to please me everybody want to give their afternoon duty for me and that again in the end of the day mutual benefit they were happy to stay longer time with their family and I was not married and when it comes to getting married, proudly saying again, as a drop of water, I was so persistent. And my husband, Karam Habibi, he's a physician, he's a psychiatrist. Allow me to say Habibi, Smihuli Agul Habibi. That's simply because he deserved it. Karam, he is the, fiance, the proposal number 27. So I had 26 proposals before him, not because I am. Um, pretty or uh, I, I'm so proud of that. No, simply because I had two conditions. They will come and they will propose. And then my brother, my father passed away, Habibi, Allah irhamu yihsin ilayhi, inshallah. So my brother will tell them, see, the girl, she has no condition. Her only condition that we need to write in the marriage contract, as you know, in Islam as, and also UAE law, allow the woman to write whatever condition she wants in the marriage contract. It's like any other contract. So I had two conditions that it should be written in my marriage contract that he cannot stop me from working and cannot stop me from studying. And if he will do that, I can take divorce without paying him anything or with any, <coughs> any issue to be finalized officially and very soon. So all of them, they will come and propose and so on. But as soon, my brother will be very serious. He, he will tell them, by the way, I'm serious. She's insisting to be written. He said, no, this is a man talk, a man word. He said she doesn't believe in that. She wanted to be written in the paper. Imagine all the 26 proposal, they were only a male. Who, the guy who accepted this condition was the real gentleman. And as you know, there is a big difference between male mosquito and uh, fly mosquito and human being. You know that, you know? There is a big difference between male and gentleman. Gentleman who is really confident enough that the success of his partner, or his partner, it will never uh, drop him down or it will encourage him more. And that's what happened with my dear husband, uh, Karam. He was the only guy who accepted that condition. And imagine, he came proposing five times. I'll tell you why I'm mentioning this point, especially for my dear sisters. 
we in as a woman we try always to blame the community blame our uh, unfortunately religion but we should be smart enough to dig and try to find out what is our right what is available in the community which will help me getting my right without even affecting the system affecting the family repetition and that what happens so as soon I knew that this is a, this is a right where women can ask for I insisted on that and my mother was worried because all my sister they got married and she was saying Maryam bint Arsin bint Arsin and Maya Mayu is about to get married before I you know and she was so worried so when this gentleman Karam came forward and he accepted my law my mother she didn't believe it she said Ali are you sure that he wrote in the uh, he, he accepted to be written in the, in, in, the, in, in the contract. He said, yeah, mama, they don't mind. And even his father, he said, it's fine. Because my mother, she doesn't want me to get married from them. She wanted me to stay within the tribe. I am originally Balushi, and my mother, she is Qahtani. So we are, have, we are, we are considered one of the b b big tribe in the, uh, in the Arab trees. So he is away, he's Shimmeri, which is somehow near uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, Iraq. So when, when he accepted, she said, Mama, go and insist. My mother was telling uh, uh, my brother Ali, please go and make sure. I'm sure they will not accept. Then my mother, only to make sure that this thing will not go ahead, she said, okay, please tell them that Mahar, the, the dowry for my daughter, is one million dirham. My mother, she was insisting only to make sure that this marriage will not go ahead. So when he went back, my br brother Ali, to the, uh, to the, to the uh, gathered gentleman in the majlis, he said, my, uh, the, my daughter's uh, mahar or dowry, it's one million dirham. He's the only, child, uh, the only son for his family. So his father, he said, we are ready to pay two million. So my, then again, it was a whole scenario. My mother started crying. Then she said, okay, please do her mahar like her sister. And proudly saying, alhamdulillah, all our uh, mahar and dowry in my family, we are five sisters. It is 50 fils, you know, half of the dirham and holy Quran, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. And again, that itself reflect another raising up and why we as a woman should make sure that our daughter are really confident enough that they worth a lot to us. And that itself will help the woman to, and the girl to, to have more confidence in herself that she is really so much valuable to her family. And going back to a drop of water, to insist in something you believe in and to be very much focused on where you are going, that is another uh, tool of success to reach where you want and to lead by example. Finally, the other characteristic of a drop of water, which I would like to share with all of you, <coughs> is very important to be optimistic. And we in Islam, alhamdulillah, we have a very uh, clear, uh, uh, let's say, approach toward the, uh, the faith and what is written for us in the future. That tafa'alu bil khayri tajidu. Always think positive about what you want and you will find it. And even furthermore, uh, um, um, I, I can um, um, I do apologize for, for my weak English. By the way, I am in Japan for the past, past five years. I lost lots of my English vocabularies and my communication. There in Japan, I need to communicate with them with the simplest ever vocabularies and language so I can communicate my the rest of my colleague. So when when um, there is another say in Arabic also which says that. Um, uh, uh, I cannot translate, but anyhow, to stay positive. And as a drop of water, even if you will be evaporated because of the high heat of the sun, but still you will go back to the cloud and come up with the best form of life, which is a drop of water, which will nourish the whole desert. And, and, and uh, the whole desert. And at the same time, everybody will looking forward for this drop of water to come down from the cloud to nourish the ground. I always think myself in that way. Although I had lots of, let's say, unsuccessful step in my life, I sometimes I fall down, but I, I get up stronger. And I try always imagine myself like a drop of water. And I, I'll, I'll finalize with this experience, which helped me a lot, and I learned a lot from that. 
the the only two decision which I really uh, uh, feel sorry for, it was a decision where I took it in a time of a month where I was not aware about it. I enter a leadership program in Bernamed Sheikh Mohammed Al-Adad al qada for uh, leadership. It was a two-year program, two years program where it was organized and planned by Harvard University and Cranfield Business School and London Business School. And it was a two-year program, uh, five times a month. We used to go and sit in a proper uh, course where we need to submit a project in the end of the program. Uh, so during this program, uh, I had to go through lots of, uh, let's say, difficulty. Being a doctor and physician, if you will miss some of your uh, uh, <coughs> clinic or you will see less number of patients, sometimes you will not be able to get your certificate. And in the same time, I was really willing a lot to finish this and do it in the right way. So I, I need to compromise and I need to do lots of night duties. During that time, I had to... Uh, I was married during that time, and uh, my dear husband, Karam, was around. He cannot complain. He cannot ask me to stop studying. He cannot ask me to stop working. So because in the end of the day, as a woman, uh, it's very important to understand our normal physiology. And during this course and other course which I attended, nobody ever gave us an advice or a guidance that a woman leader, it somehow different. We cannot say worse or ba better than a male leader, a gentleman leadership. So we as a woman, we have a five day per month where we are under the control of our estrogen. That is a reality. That is something which makes us feel proud of ourselves to become a mother. Without this control of estrogen, we will not have the pleasure to be mother. So during these five days, a woman will be under control of estrogen. And believe me, whoever will tell you, sorry, that doesn't affect me, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting affected, she is not being honest with herself. But as soon you know, we cannot consider this weakness, but as soon you are fully aware about yourself, and when you need to be careful, that will help you a lot. So when I think about drop of water, sometime when you are coming up from the sky, very pure from the cloud, very pure drop of water, you cannot choose the land which you will, will come on. And sometime it will be so unfortunately saying that a dirty, a dirty floor where you will be mixed with other drop of water which are not clean enough like you. So uh, going back to the normal physiology of women, as a drop of water, sometimes you need to go through some process, but at least you know that one day you will evaporate, you will go back again to the cloud. So as a normal physiology of the woman, it's very important for a woman in a leadership and a woman in, in a managerial position, a woman in any position where she needs to take a decision to be aware about this five days. And I went and I did my search. I didn't find anything in administration or leadership. But I, I found it as a, being a physician, I understood. So then I went back and I did some further research in psychology. And I find out that the woman, when she is under of estrogen, one day before and the first day of her period and the second day of her period, this time she will be nervous and even the, the chemical in her brain will not be stable. That doesn't mean she is mad or she is unstable human being. But in the end of the day, this is a normal physiology which will not make the woman to be stable enough to take a decision. That is, again, not a weakness. That helped me a lot. Only by understanding my physiology and always imagining, imagining myself as a drop of water helped me to make sure whenever I'll take any leading position, any responsibility, first thing I will do, I'll choose my team. If the project is two, two years, I might take three months, if not six, to choose my right team. Because they are the people who will help me to decide during that time. And I always, from that day, start working through a team, not with the team. So, and I will tell, I always make sure my office manager, she's a woman. So she will know exactly, she will mark those three days. And she will make sure I will not have an official meeting, critical meeting during these three days. She will find a reason for that. And if I have to do it and I need to take a serious decision, 
I make sure I get my team who I trust, who was with me from the beginning, who is fully oriented and aware about the whole process of that project. And I'll sit with them and I'll share with them and they will help me to take a decision. And believe me, from 2009 till today, I, uh, I don't feel sorry for a single decision I took during that time. And that all goes back to be aware about your strength and be aware about those areas where you cannot maintain that strength. So as a woman, as a leader again, as a drop of water, it's very important for us to understand ourselves. And by the way, even the male, they have their own uh, effect under testosterone. You need to go and think about it. But we are always lucky as a woman. We have, we have a, f a clear indication which help us. But you as a man, you cannot predict that. You don't know when your testosterone up, when your testosterone down. You need to go to the doctor to check that, unfortunately. We as a woman, we are always lucky, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Be proud to be a woman and be proud to to show that as a woman. And finally, uh, as a drop of water, drop of water always uh, maintain lots of its characteristic. Regardless of the shape of the glass, the water will try to figure out and accommodate herself to that uh, container or to that shape. That's what I always try to imagine myself in a situation where I feel it doesn't fit me or it's not well with my uh, characteristic. As long as it doesn't conflict with my value, I am more than happy to shape myself with that. So it's very important as, 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 as a national treasure to think about yourself not as a Maryam mother, no, think about yourself as, uh, as, as, uh, as a citizen who is, uh, regardless of what she will say, regardless of what she will do, it will simply will be pointed as an Emirati woman. And that itself always put you, make sure you are on the tip of your toe where you think 100 times before taking the next step. And finally, I would like to uh, emphasize on uh, the importance of, 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 of the, the, the male. Uh, so yesterday, I was in uh, Ras al Khaimah, and uh, His Highness Sheikh Saud was uh, giving a very nice speech in the opening where he talked about the important role of women and how essential it's women to be in the whole process of development. <coughs> because of that, I believe we as a woman, we have to do the same. We have to always try to give our, our gentlemen, brothers, and, 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 and colleagues the right value. Without them, that won't be a, a healthy equation toward the future. We are not in a competition. We are complementing each other. And truly saying, me as a woman, as a Maria Matar, I cannot work in a team where there is no single male. And this is one of the area where we as a woman have to make sure that in the future, if we are the majority of the leadership, which His Highness said already, Sheikh Mohammed, so in the future, inshallah, we'll be the majority in the leading position in the government. This was predicted by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed, so it's not my wish. If he predicts something, it will happen. So. We have to make sure when we'll be in that position, we will give our male colleague enough uh, and, and, uh, support, and we will make sh sure that they are leading with us. We are not there alone as a, as a black abaya in the front. No, there will be a proper lovely piano key where the black and white complement each other for you to have a lovely symphony. Thank you very much again.